What you guys got another video here for you on how to set up a file sharing server in minutes. That's what we're going to take a look at today. There's quite a few ways of going about doing this, but we're going to be using FileZilla. So let's go ahead and head over to FileZilla's website and download the actual FileZilla server. So what we're going to do is download this and get it onto the PC and we're going to go ahead and install it. Now you might see a little warning sign here. That's normal. Just click on the three dots and click on keep and then keep anyway. And this will then download the actual software onto the PC. Now you can use an old computer for this, or you can use a mini PC or whatever it is you want to use a virtual machine, whatever it is you want to use for your file server. Once we've got the file downloaded, let's double click on it and we'll get it installed. Say yes to the user account control. And this will open up the FileZilla server. We're going to go ahead and leave those all checked. Click next. We're going to click next here. Next again. This is where you can choose your server settings. So if you want to install as service uh, started with Windows default, you can do. I'm going to leave that as is as default. We can start the server after setup uh, completes and we can run the service under the system Windows user account if you want to or run the service under a different Windows user. It's entirely up to you. We'll take care of all of that a little bit later on. So let's click next here. Here we're going to need to choose administrator password. Make sure it's a nice strong password because this is for administrator purposes. So let's go ahead and do that right here. And once we've got both of these typed out, make sure they're pretty complex because you don't want someone guessing this and be able to gain access to your server. So from here, we've got also allow administrators connections on all network adapters required password. We're going to check mark that, I think, and we will then move on to the next step. So let's go ahead and click next. Here you can see we can now use the admin settings here to start if user logs on, apply to all users as default, or we can set this to manual if we want to and use the uh, icon on the desktop. We're going to set it to manual for now, but you can set this up to whatever you like here. Next, we're going to click on the install button and this will go ahead and install all of the FileZilla server settings onto the PC. Now you're going to get this popping up here. Take note of the FileZilla server administrator interface TLS fingerprints. There's a long code there, so you can take note of that. I've already blurred that out. Now we can connect to our server by clicking on connect to server. So let's go ahead and do that right here. Now we can connect to our server by putting our password in. So let's go ahead and put our administrator password in right here. You can save the password automatically to connect to the server at startup if you want to. I wouldn't advise doing these because they can be a security risk. So it's probably best to leave those unchecked. Put your password in and we can now click on OK. So let's go ahead and click OK here. There will be another fingerprint provided right there. And now we've connected to 127.0.0.1. And there we have our connection. So what we want to do next is we're going to configure our interface. So let's go up to server and then go to uh, FTP network configuration wizard here. I'm going to click on this one. And what we want to do here is we want to go to next. You can take your time and read all the information if you wish, but we're going to just click next here. Use a custom port range. That's what we're going to do because we want to use our own port range. You can use whatever port range you want to use, but let's just say we want to use, say, 20,000 right here. So let's go ahead and do that. 20,000 and up until we're going to do 20,100. Let's just put that in like so right there. So now that's done, we can now click on next to continue on to the next phase. So let's go ahead and do that right here. We can leave this uh, blank here, but you can retrieve your public IP address right here. You can use your IP, local IP for local connections recommended. Leave that check marked right there and we can move on to the next phase. So let's go ahead and click on next. And this should take us to the next page where we've got network configuration settings right here. We're just going to click next here and we're going to click finish right here. Uh, the test did not yet terminate. 
So we're going to say yes. Do we want to finish? So I'm going to say yes here. So let's go ahead and do that right here. So that's now done. What we can do now is we need to open up a port on our firewall on the server. So let's go to the firewall settings by typing firewall. Go to Windows Defender Firewall right here. Click on this and it will open this up right here. Go down to Advanced Settings on the left hand side. And this will open up the Advanced Settings panel. So let's do that right here. Once we've got this done, it should look something like this. Inbound rules, that's what we need to change. So we're going to add an inbound rule here. So let's go ahead, right click, go new rule. And we're going to change this to ports because we don't want to do it for a program. We want it as a port. And then we're going to go next. And we can leave these as is. And we're going to specify our local ports that we want to use. So we're going to do 21 for FTP here, comma, space, 20,000, and then dash, and then 21,000 as well to end it. So let's go ahead and click next here. And we're going to allow all the connections. So let's click on next and finish that off. And that should then allow us to choose who we want to apply this rule to. And we're going to say all of those and we're going to give it a name. And we're going to call this say FTP ports so we can understand that that's what that rule is for. There we go. That's now done. So let's head back to the administrator interface panel because we can close this off right here now because we've done with the firewall. Go to the server icon up the administrator interface and we're going to go to configure here because we need to configure some users. So let's go ahead and do that right here. Click on configure and you should see users here and groups. So we're going to go into users and we're going to click OK here to remove that. Now, what we've got here is system user and you can enable the system user. This is not really recommended. This is going to use your uh, system users uh, permission to log on and we can create our own user groups for this if we wanted to. So that's that's probably the best thing to do here. So let's click on add and we're going to call this say FTP user or FTP user one, FTP user two, FTP user three. How many users you want to be able to connect to your file server and this will mean you'll only be sharing the data that you're sharing uh, what you specify rather than using the system user and allowing to share all of their content we don't want to do that so let's require password to log in so for FTP user one we're going to give this a password right here so let's put a password in for this and then we're going to need to specify a, a virtual path and a native path to a file or files that you want to share uh, with these people. So let's go ahead and we'll set this up. Now, depending on what content you want to share on your server, let's just create a folder and we'll call that shares and we'll share just the content in that folder. But yours can be as complex as you like. You can share whatever content you want on your file server. So we're going to go ahead and open up Explorer here and go to this PC and we're going to go to the C root directory here and we're going to create a folder like so and we'll call this shares, just something like that. It's nice and simple. So let's go ahead and create that and that's now done. We can put our content inside there that we want to share with everyone. So let's go ahead and we're going to go back to the uh, interface here and we're going to go ahead and configure the virtual path and the native path. So that was in our C root directory and it was called shares. So we're going to call the virtual path forward slash shares and the native path will be C colon backslash shares. And that's what we need to do. So let's click on the add button here to add in our virtual path. And this will be read and write permission. So we're going to go forward slash shares and we're going to go native, which is this one right here. And this is going to be our C colon backslash shares because that is the actual path, the native path. So once we've got that done here, we can check the specifications here. And these are going to be our read and write options. These are fine. 
everything is done we can now click apply and OK. So let's do that right here and that's done. So let's go ahead and connect to our server on another computer. First we need to get the IP address of the server. So let's right click on the start button, open up a terminal window and we're going to type in here IP config and then push enter and this will give us the IP address right here. So you can see here IP address or IP version 4 address, that's it right there, 192.168.171.168. So that is the IP address that we need to connect to because that's where our server software is installed. So what we're going to do is take note of that IP address right there. We're going to head over to another computer. We're going to need to download the client software because we've installed the server software. We just need the client software so we can share files between the client and also the server. So I'm going to go ahead and download the client software here, get this installed onto the PC. Same thing. We're just going to go ahead and click on the executable file, click I agree. Now you can see here, be careful you don't accept these terms because otherwise it's going to install anti-malware programs on here. This is classed as open candy. So decline that and move on to the next part. I'm going to accept all of these here and click install and it's now done and we can now start FileZilla client. So you should see host up the top. This is the IP address right here. So let's go ahead and put our IP address inside here. So let's go ahead and put that in. It's 192.168.171.168. That was the IP address. Username was FTP user. And we're going to go ahead and put that in here. And we need to put the password in here as well. And we need to click on quick connect and this should connect us to the server. So let's go ahead and try that right here. And it's going to say save passwords. Let's click OK here. And it's now given us a unknown certificate. So we're going to click OK. You can always trust this certificate. So let's click OK here. We're getting a critical error. Could not connect to the server. And I think I've spotted what that is. It's the username is called FTP user and not FTP user one. So that's probably why that is. And this is pretty common. Uh, if you make a mistake, that's what's going to happen. So leave the IP address as is. And we're going to go back up and type FTP user one because that's what it was when I changed it. Put the password in and we should now be able to use the quick connect and it should now connect to the server. There we go. That's more like it. So we're now connected and we can now see our shares folder. We can't see any other data on that server, just that shares folder. And that's exactly what you want. So now you can create files, you can create folders and you can share photos, documents, whatever it is on the local network. Very simple and easy to do. And again, you can create user accounts for different computers, depending on how many computers you have on your local network. And it's very simple and easy to set up. So let me quickly put a couple of images up here so you can see we'll create a new directory called photos or something like that inside here, just to give you an idea. And from there, we can go into the photos directory and we can uh, upload a couple of photos uh, files to our server. So let's go ahead and do that right here. You can actually connect to that on the left hand side. So let's go to documents and then go to downloads here. There might be some photos in here uh, we can use. There we go. So let's just put a couple of these up there so we've got an idea. So we'll drag that over there like so and that's now uploaded. And we've got one more here. Let's just do this one right here and upload that to the server as well. That's simple to upload and download content from your server. If you right click on these files, it will give you options as well. So let's head over to the server once more and you can see all of the activity that's been happening right here. And again, you've got all your buttons there to start and stop and start the server. And we can also see inside our shares, we should have those photos in here that we just uploaded. There we go. So that's how quick and easy it is to set up a quick file sharing server. There's quite a few ways of doing this. It's just one way of doing it using a FileZilla. 
Let me know if you want to see any more of this sort of content in the comments section down below. I'd be happy to make those videos for you. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a big shout out to everyone who has sent well wishes for my operation. I really do appreciate it. I'm on the mend. I'm getting better. And uh, I shall catch you in the very next video. A big shout out also to all my YouTube members who join my YouTube members group. Your names are rolling up on the screen as well. Anyway, I shall catch you in the next video or I'll see you on the Discord server for a chat. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now.